Hey everyone, this is Lisa from a countrygirlslife.com and thepaperhen.com. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own custom DIY, DIY lapel pins, button pins. And um, I've been experimenting for a couple weeks now, trying some different things, and I think I found a method that I can easily teach you guys to make some really cool pins. Um, They've got this super cool, um, shiny depth to them. Um, they look professional. I don't think too many people could tell that, you know, somebody actually made this at home. And what's awesome is that it only takes a few inexpensive materials to do this at home. And you can create pins just like this. And I, I have been making a ton of pins. Love them. I'm putting them on everything. Obviously, my jean jacket here. I've got my fanny pack. Yes, I wear a fanny pack occasionally. Um, purses, backpacks. Uh, I put them on everything. I just, I love pins. And of course, as planner people, for whatever reason, we also love collecting pins. Um, but now you can make your own at home uh, if you have some custom design that you want to do. You can buy images. Um, you can use some of the free images from our website, uh, countrygirlslife.com. We have a whole free library of images and printables that you can use. Um, you can go to creativemarket.com. There's a ton of stuff on there for purchase as far as graphics and images. So uh, the sky's the limit. You can make whatever you want, really. So, okay, I'm gonna first go through all the materials that you're gonna need here. And then we're gonna go through a high level step by step. But I have created a very extensive post with all of the information that you'll need, all of the details that's written down here. This is just kind of a video overview. So um, let's just take these off and the jacket here and then we'll talk about everything that you need, okay? Um, so the biggest thing, the most important thing, and how we actually make these pins are the um, New Fun Shrink With Ink Plastic Film. Um, so very important, this film is plastic. It's only for inkjet printers. If you have a laser printer, do not buy this and put it in your printer. It will probably melt because it's basically like a thick specialized plastic, okay? Another cool thing, they have a glow in the dark version. I mean, I, I can't even wait to use that at Halloween. I have a ton of ideas for Halloween pins, um, keychains, charms, uh, planner charms. I am so excited to get using those glow in the dark sheets. So you can buy it in plain, glow in the dark, but again, this is new fun activities. I ordered it off of Amazon. I will link to that below. Um, you're gonna need some scissors. Um, if you are making something other than a pin, like a planner charm, a keychain, a necklace, something like that, You'll want to punch so that you can punch your images before you bake them. Okay, so a hole punch. Uh, you're going to need some parchment paper. You'll need an oven or a toaster oven. You can't put these in the microwave, so you'll need one of those two things. You'll need toothpicks for popping air bubbles. Um, you'll need super glue. Um, and another important component is the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. That's what gives us that, you know, depth on our pins and that shininess and gives it kind of that professional look. So that's also super important. Another important thing, Rust-Oleum Gloss Clear Enamel. Okay, we're going to use this to seal our images. You can skip this step if you know that you have waterproof ink in your printer, but probably 99% of us do not have that, so you need to do a couple coats of, of clear gloss enamel or acrylic. If you have acrylic, you can um, use that as well, but you need a couple coats of that. Um, last but not least, the locking pin backs. Um, I will link to these. These are my absolute preference for making pins because they lock, okay? Um, super important. Please do not buy, little PSA here, do not buy rubber-backed pins. Um, they will just fall off and your pin will get lost and then you'll be very sad and that would be horrible. So these locking pins, they lock in place after you push them in, right? And in theory, they shouldn't fall off, but if you don't get it seated perfectly, it could happen, okay? Another thing I would recommend 
is um, if you have the space to do so, put two pins on each, sorry, two locking pins on your backs of your pin. And the reason that is, is kind of a belt and suspenders thing. If you don't get it seated right or whatever, um, and this falls off, you always have another pin back there to back you up, okay? Another thing is, that kind of drives me crazy, Does I mean, I hate when the pins like spin around and, you know, I want to get them orientated properly and two pin backs will allow you to do that. So you always be upright. It won't be spinning around and doing crazy stuff like that. So I really like doing two and you should probably account for two pin backs if all that sounds awesome sauce to you. So the pin backs, all right, super important. You're also going to need a baking sheet, um, nothing special there, just a baking sheet and then this parchment and that will get you all set up. Those are basically all your supplies there, okay? Um, so start gathering that up, check out the links below that um, will link to all of this stuff so you know where to find it. Um, and now we'll talk a little bit about images and what exactly happens. Um, like I said, you, there's lots of places that you can get images. Um, on our website, you can go to creativemarket.com. You can buy images there. Um, maybe you have some on your computer or you have pictures of somebody or whatever you want to make. That's totally fine. Um, but one thing you have to keep in mind is you have to size the images properly. Okay, and I'm just going to show you some quick examples of how big they need to be. So you need to size them about three inches by three inches to get a one inch pin. So, you know, this washi, for instance, this washi stack was, you know, about that size, about three inches, and it shrunk down to this. So I would aim for the two and a half to three inches by two and a half to three inches on each of your images, okay, to get roughly a one inch pin. So I've already printed these out on the new fun shrink with ink, and I'm doing some experimenting. I haven't tried these yet, but you're going to want to um, make sure you size those correctly. So it's actually quite large uh, when it starts out to get down to something that's like this size, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, there's a few programs that you can use. You can use pickmonkey.com. You could um, open up just a Microsoft Word or a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation and just pop some images in there and, tr and size them in there and then print them out. Um, the print settings are really important. You want to make sure that you are printing out on high quality the high quality setting and matte photo paper, okay? Um, if you run it through your printer too fast, then the ink will smudge and it looks terrible, okay? So that's super important. So make sure that you are on a low speed, high quality, do the photo matte paper um, when you're printing this out, okay? So assuming that you have your images cut out, you're down to something that looks like this, okay? You wanna make sure you cut out as much as the white or whatever around it and just get to your image, okay? And once you have that, you are going to bake them. And yes, this is sort of like shrinky dinks. If anybody played with this in the past as a kid or whatever I did, um, I always thought that was horrible. This is like a much better, more improved product. Um, shrinky dinks were kind of dinky if I'm being quite honest but anyway so you get down to this final product and you're going to put it on your baking sheet okay you have a layer of parchment below and then we're going to put a layer of parchment on top of whatever images you're putting down and I suggest that you only do one or two at a time and there's a good reason for this because chances are you'll have one or two of your images that get a little bit of curl up or a little bit of distortion and you want to tamp those down while they are still warm when they come out of the oven with like an oven mitt. So if you have like 10 images and you throw them all in the oven, you're not going to be able to tamp them down 
uh, quick enough before they harden. So just do one or two images at a time, okay? And if you do two images, separate them by a couple inches, okay? So that they don't interfere with each other. Cover them with the parchment. This goes into the oven, at least for, for my settings. It may be different for your oven, but I put it in at 350 and it was just a little over two minutes. Um, and they, they shrunk down. So it's a pretty quick process, but don't forget to put the parchment down and then put another piece of parchment over top that just kind of helps weigh it down so you don't get as much um, curling. Um, you'll probably still get a little bit, but you'll be able to tamp it down with an oven mitt and then it'll be okay. So after things come out of the oven um, is when we have to hit it with that clear gloss enamel that I talked about. You're gonna do two coats. Again, a clear acrylic is also okay. So you're going to do two coats. If you have warm weather, it'll be like 30 minutes in between each coat. And you just do two quick coats and then that ensures that it will seal in this ink and it won't smudge. Um, when you put the dimensional magic on, the colors won't run. And if this is your last step, like you're just doing this as a kid's project or whatever, and you don't want to go through the next step, which is understandable, um, it will seal in that ink so it doesn't rub off or wash off. But this is a pretty important step here, um, especially if you're going on to the dimensional magic step, because if you do not seal it, your colors will run, okay? But again, if you have that waterproof ink that we talked about, you don't have to worry about that, but please don't skip this step, two coats at least, and then you are golden, okay? So then after we've sealed um, our pin here, then we are going to hit it with the Dimensional Magic. And so this is basically an epoxy, and it takes, they say three hours to dry, but I would give it a full 24 hours to dry. Um, before you move on to the next step. So what I do is um, I basically outline it. I use, a, I go with a, a bead of glue and then I go around the entire pin, make sure you get all of those little edges, make sure that they have um, the dimensional magic on it, do a complete bead, and then just go clockwise and work your way around and fill it in. I find using that method uh, helps to keep it from spilling over the side if you just get a little too much dimensional magic on there, which can happen. If, for instance, you do get um, it spilling over the side or whatever, um, then put it on a couple of toothpicks, uh, you know, let it drain completely, and it'll be fine. It's not a big deal. Um, so another thing is occasionally, do you might get like a air bubble in there and they're usually pretty small and you might think oh well I can just pop that air bubble with the toothpick but actually it's kind of just encased in there so you have to go and push the air bubble off to the side okay with a toothpick and just scrape it off to the side and then you'll eventually get it out of there you can't pop it okay so that's what the toothpicks are for um Another thing, don't shake around your dimensional magic. It does not need to be shaked. If you do shake it, then you're gonna add air bubbles to it. And we don't want that. Air bubbles are bad, okay, for all the reasons that I just discussed. So at this point, we're assuming that we've got um, our clear coat on, we've got our dimensional magic, we've given it 24 hours to dry, and now we're gonna do the pin backs, okay? This is super simple. Um, just one to two dabs of Gorilla Super Glue. I like this glue because it actually clear, it dries clear and not yellow like a lot of other super glues. And I don't like seeing the yellow gunk, you know, sticking out from my pin backs. So I like that brand best. It hasn't failed me yet. So, um, I like using that one. Uh, again, two pin backs you know, belt and suspenders and keep the thing from moving around and spinning. You only need one to two drops of glue uh, underneath each pin back. So you don't need to get crazy with the glue. Um, and let that dry. It'll tell you 10 seconds. That is a lie. I would give it probably three or four hours to totally dry. You know, make sure you push down, you get it seated on there. 
um, but give it a couple hours to dry. Um, 10 seconds, that's just, I, I don't even know where they came up with that, but it's not, not for this project anyway. Maybe for porcelain china, but not for this. So once you have your pin backs on, then you are completely done and you are ready to enjoy your beautiful pins, put them on everything you own, um, experiment, play with different kinds of images. One thing I would say is try and avoid any perfectly round images. Um, perfectly round images come out looking like this. Like this was a round image. It's my logo for um, another uh, pet project I'm working on. It's a skateboarding website. And this logo was round previously. Now it's more egg shake. I still like it. I think it turned out great. I, and you know, this one's the same thing. This was also a round logo. Um, but the things that have a tendency to do really well are things that are, have kind of organic lines, you know, cartoons, um, things that aren't perfectly square shaped, you know, perfectly round, just kind of organic things um, do really well. So keep that in mind when you're picking your images. Um, about the only way you could get perfectly round images is if you distorted them um, on your computer before you printed them out in the hopes that it would come out round. But that would probably take a lot of a lot of experimentation, probably wasting a lot of perfectly good uh, shrink with ink film. So keep that in mind. Um, and before you go, um, just want to let you know where you can find um, some cool images for free. And that is on our website over at acountrygirlslife.com. Uh, we also have a shop, thepaperhen.com. If you want to follow us on all of our social media channels, we're over at Pinterest, uh, countrygirlslife.com. And we have an awesome Facebook group. We have over, I don't know, probably 11,000 members now. Um, it's called Totally Free Printables. We share all of our Friday freebies there so you can see um, what's happening this week, what's for free, and usually those are limited time basis. Um, you only have a short time to download them. Obviously, this is our YouTube channel. Please subscribe, follow us, like, leave us some comments. If you have questions about anything I've said here, then please um, let us know in the comments and we'll try and get back to you with an answer here pretty quickly. And then on Instagram, we are a Country Girls Life official. So thanks for taking a few minutes to check us out in this video. And don't forget to read over our detailed post. Um, it's over 2,000 words. It's very in-depth with lots of um, detailed pictures on how you can do this at home too. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Take care.